สวัสดีครับ Welcome to this pitch video. If you look at the title, um, this is not a prediction or certainly not something that I need as a photographer or content creator. This is just a pitch idea of something I think is cool, and hopefully you guys find it cool as well. And feel free to be creative in the comments below as well of a kind of design that you think is cool. And in this video, it's going to be making a X hundred style medium format camera. So it will be a lens built into the body of the camera. And the benefits of this is that it will one be much more compact. The lens itself can be faster, which it will be good for a medium format standpoint. And I'll get into the details later. And also, it will be hopefully a leaf shutter design, just like the X 100 B. And I'll get to more details later. But right now, the image before you, the X 100 F. This is a fan-made concept design that I found randomly that appears to be uploaded in Fuji Rumors. Though I couldn't get into the link, it just took me to a, a dead link. But I still sort of have this image. And a couple other references of previous old posted uh, medium format uh, body designs that, for some reason, was re-uploaded uh, on a Facebook group. In the next photo, is that the first concept that I wanted to borrow and is inspired from is this uh, shutter speed dial that is built into the mount of the camera, and this is. Reference uh, to the Olympus OM2 camera that you can see right against the body. You can sort of change the shutter speed dial, and this seems to be very useful to since your hand is already on the lens for manual focusing or just holding the camera in general. That you can change the shutter speed right on the mount, and then move back to manual focusing or move up ahead to change the aperture. But because of the flange distance in the Fuji mount, uh, having or using the space here for shutter speed can be quite interesting. Here are some other photos from those concept bodies from that post. If you would like to take a look, though we won't be referencing any particular design here. Just thought that you might be interested to see. But up next, uh, I would like to give credit to House of Blood and their sort of small design. You can sort of see the comparison here of how small they're able to keep their bodies, but also that they are able to put the battery on the handle grip, which we will get into. And understandable that Fujifilm wants to keep the retro design, but there is a medium format camera that they have made, a film medium format camera that they have made that has a larger grip that will not break the vintage design that they are trying to go for. But Hasselblad keeping their cameras quite small is also due to the shutter mechanism that it is a leaf shutter inside their lens, so they're able to keep the body much thinner. And that is sort of the main goal with this pitch of having a Fujifilm uh, lens built into the camera X100 style, uh, which is also to allow the camera to have its own leaf shutter mechanism. Which also allows for different or higher flash sync speeds, which will benefit any sort of fast shoot photographer or any other person who is looking to use higher flash sync speeds. Moving on, this is just another reference photo from other uh, cameras that you can see how the blood keeps their cameras quite small. But enough of that, it's only size comparison, not wanting to compare specs here. Um, for the lens selection right now, we will be going for the 50mm 3.5. And because of how it's going to be designed and built into the camera, I think one could sort of push the aperture down to 2.8, which will be fast enough and more than enough bokeh. Um, let's say for a medium format size. Doesn't have to go down to F2 like the X100B. And this is just another size comparison once again of how small the X100B is compared to the 50R with its own uh, pancake 
lens and then just the Pro 3 with its own 23mm which is the same as the X100B and just how small they're able to compact the 23F2 down to the X100B body. And just for comparison with the focal length, um, because it's 23mm on an APS-C, it's equivalent to 35mm on a full frame, while GFX 50 is then down to 40 So 35 to 40 is relatively close, but it's up to you once again um, how different is 35 to 40 and how different is uh, 5mm in uh, photography. That's up to you to decide. But with that said, um, I want to take a look at sort of the distance between the lens and then the sensor itself. So if you look at the white dot, and this I figured out thanks to Big Head Taco that uh, showed off his um, X100 and Pro cameras that the sensor is marked on the white dot and then you can sort of see that um, Fuji is able to put the X100B lens so small because the lens itself is actually inside of the camera and then they push the sensor back to on the edge of the camera body itself and that's the same concept that we'll be doing for the 50R to sort of push back that sensor um, just so that the lens itself can go inside of the body just calculating by percentage wise the X100V distance um, is 45% smaller so just going by those numbers is in general here the 114mm distance would then go down to around 63mm in depth this is, isn't a distance between sensor and uh, lens. This is the full depth of the camera itself. But speaking of lenses, the 23mm f2 lens and the X100V lens is actually different. And one of the ways that they're able to make the X100V lens smaller is because it has two less elements. And so the same concept will have to be applied, though that is up to the engineers to figure that out. Just to understand that the GFX 50mm from their nine elements might be reduced down to eight or possibly lower if that's even possible just to make it even smaller and just to compare the distance between sensor and lens I thought it was quite interesting that the uh, Pro 3 distance is relatively close to the GFX 50R with the 50mm with that said, this is just a comparison again to remove the mount because that is no longer required and just pulling it down along with the sensor distance as you can see on the left hand side that is already much more compact. So I want to go a little bit further just to compare like if they're able to push the lens elements deep inside of the camera and then make it look as close as the X100V style then it might look like this. And a very cool post that I found on Facebook a couple weeks ago of someone who adapted their uh, Context T Carl Zeiss 38mm f2.8 and yes it does cover um, the full sensor though a very big vignette but this is just um, an inspiration of how compact a lens could be if it's sort of built correctly. Um, in this case the lens diameter should sort of be much larger, larger to uh, remove any vignetting but the idea that it's able to be so compact and shallow is um, what I'm looking for. So back to the design once again, um, I want to try to implement the shutter speed mechanism on the mount itself into this, into the design, uh, assuming that the lens itself cannot get much smaller than this. And going much smaller uh, may not be the goal itself, otherwise your hands cannot really grip the different menu settings or the shutter speed, aperture, and focus uh, properly. So going too small might not be a benefit thing. 
but with that one can also just choose and you can just let me know what is your preference um, if you want the focus to be at the very end of the lens and then have aperture and shutter speed line up below or we go back to the Olympus style where it is shutter speed then focus in the middle and aperture at the tip now that would be the end of the <laughs> design idea but I want to go and take it a little bit further and this is just going even more crazy and reference the GS I believe 645 medium format camera made by Fuji and this so happens to be a vertical orientated camera so what if we are able to just make the sensor vertical and I just sort of added the Pro 3 optical viewfinder um, if you wanted a viewfinder or thinking that Fujifilm should add such a thing um, into their next medium format camera well you can sort of let me know and it could be a cool idea just to see and not just to make the body itself um, less wide which seems to be a general complaint because it's so wide the weight is sort of pulling down on your hands so the idea for having it vertical is to be able to make the camera a little bit more square like just like the GS medium format film cameras and so it's understandable to make the top part much taller while making it less wide and of course the optical viewfinder would then need to be placed vertical as well so this is just a comparison from behind and a blue square just to show how square it is compared to how rectangular it used to be and of course the um, LCD itself also needs to be at a vertical uh, orientation with that I just made some very quick quick sketches um, about what it might look like with all of the places to add extra buttons and the different locations of the grip itself to be a little bit larger and we will get to that in a bit but with the lens um, sorry with the LCD itself it would just be the XT3 style but just imagine it going and rotating it counterclockwise by 90 degrees so it might only give you um, a tilt function for low angle views and then for people who do want to still sort of take horizontal or landscapes of course then they'll have the tilt function for both high and low which I think those tilt functions for the landscape view is more useful than portrait mode this portrait orientation is just mainly so that if you one is a street photographer they would most likely want to just shoot portrait modes and so to keep their hands steady and not having to sort of um, rotate it all the time um, you would most likely just be shooting straight forward or in a lower angle like one of those um, film cameras that are 6x6 um, and the reason to add the extra grip once again is that because the lens is built into the camera itself the battery will need to go some other place and because it's less wide um, the best place to put the battery is then again inside the grip and just added um, a few other details of if the buttons could be much bigger the joystick is bigger um, what would that look like and going back again to the dial up on top if the shutter speed dial is on the mount then the dial on top could be used for ISO instead which allows for a more analog experience with that said I think that is all I wanted to pitch and talk about this X100 medium format style camera I hope you enjoyed if there's any other ideas you want to share or upgrades to this design please let me know of course this is all for fun of course we all would want some kind of stabilization whether it's in the lens and that might be a reason to make the lens slightly larger that would be very useful for a medium format size camera with that said i hope you all have a nice day and i will see you all next time bye for now